Well, good morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How you doing today? It's a little bit of a gloomy morning here in Los Angeles, but we're gonna kick it off by taking Jaw for a little morning stroll, and then we're heading off to Cinecon because they're starting the day with some Laurel and Hardy. Gotta see some of that. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Yeah, so the plan today is we're gonna attend about half the day at Cinecon, and, uh, and then go hang out with Kevin. And then we have a big vlog tomorrow I think you guys are going to love. So we're going to finish up this walk with him and then we're going to call a, an Uber to take us down to the Egyptian. The Uber driver was cruising down Las Palmas to take me to the Egyptian. I said, you know what, pull over right here. I'll get out right here. I'm sure you guys know what this is and I've vlogged it before, but uh, since we were close by, or a uh, Cinecon day, this is the apartment building from Pretty Woman. Same fire escape too. All right, another great day ahead of us. Here's a great photo of the opening of the theater when they premiered Douglas Fairbanks' Robin Hood. How many people showed up for that? We want to sit up front, trust me. Brothers, sons of the desert, you all know why we're here today. <laughs> to see the magic that this man had brought on us. Yes. The third thing you're going to see, and then I'm going to give the microphone over to Chris. The third thing you're going to see this morning is called the Hollywood Victory Caravan. About 35 years ago, Irv Hanek, some of you may know who Irv is, he's been a long time son of the desert. He found uh, an article in a magazine and he saw that there was a soldier during World War II that was given tickets to one of the Hollywood Victory Caravans. What was interesting is that he got eighth row seats and he had two rolls of 16 millimeter Kodachrome film. And by doing so, he filmed the only known color footage of the Hollywood Victory Caravan, which includes, among others, Laurel McCarty, James Cagney in his Hero Grand Ole Flag outfit, Harry Grant, Olivia de Havilland, Groucho Marx, Joe Mondell. You won't miss anybody. The names will be listed before you see the sequence. It has never been publicly shown in the theater, and thanks to ProTech, who donated the services, the film has been preserved digitally, and you're gonna be the first audience to see it. Wow. If yeah, that wasn't exciting enough, the first two films we're going to see, for those of you who love The Boys, is truly a sight to behold. And to tell you more about it, is a hero of mine, and he knows, and it's embarrassing to say it, but a lot of you too. He has helped preserve maybe more films than almost any single individual in the last 50 years. I present to you the head of the UCLA Film and Television Project, Chris Horst. Thank you. The Lauren Hardy, yeah. Well, you know, the Lauren Hardy collection used to be at the Library of Congress where Jim Harwood was taking care of it. And, uh, but it moved to UCLA, and Laurel Hardy is now at home at UCLA. And so over the past seven or eight years now, we have been preserving uh, one title after the other. We did uh, Sons of the Desert feature, and we've done a lot of shorts. Last spring, this last spring, we had our first major crowdsourcing campaign. Um, and I want to thank both uh, the, pe the, the people from Cinecon who helped ma make donations as well as some of you. Uh, and we were able to raise enough money to preserve a perfect day. Uh, uh, so she's now in the works and should be uh, ready uh, probably, well, it will be ready for our festival preservation in February. Um, the two films we're going to see today are Hog Wild and Brats. I was hoping that our 
restaurationist, Scott McQueen, could be here, but he, uh, he unfortunately had an emergency and called me up this morning and said uh, he couldn't do it, so he'd have to put up with me. Um, he would have known a lot more about the technical stuff, but I can tell you that Hog Wild uh, was an all digital restoration, uh, and it had to be an all digital restoration because uh, the optical picture negative on that uh, was, was completely wrecked. And uh, so, uh, and there was also a, war, uh, a nitrate work print, which also was in terrible shape. So we took both of those elements and digitized them. Uh, and then added frames uh, from some 1945 uh, nitrate dupes from, from re-releases of the films, uh, but they had been cropped uh, for some reason, so uh, we had to digitally fix those. Um, Brett's, uh, so that's, that uh, was done all in digital and then uh, transferred back to film, um, because of course UCLA is still a archive that believes in analog, that for long-term preservation of material, analog film, and also the viewing experience in 35 millimeter film, we believe is something that should be protected and should continue. So we, even when we're doing digital preservations, first of all, make new negatives, 35 millimeter negatives, because we know if we put those in a vault, they will last for 500 years as long as we pay for the electricity. <laughs> Whereas, you know, a digital, uh, anything digital has a lifespan of three to five years. And so, uh, what would you rather, 500 years or three to five years? It's a little more economic than three to five years. Uh, 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 500 years. Anyway, um, so Bratz was started analog for 10, about 10 years ago. And then for, for some reason, which I'm not clear about, was, was left unfinished. Um, there were uh, surviving reissue materials that were all uh, cropped uh, um, and badly scuffed. And, uh, and uh, like Hog Wild, it would have been a good candidate for uh, complete digital restoration. But unfortunately, we didn't have the money to do that. Uh, so this is an, uh, an analog workaround. Um, I want to thank Gary Lacker and Jeff Joseph who provided the original biochem disc for this uh, The original main titles, um, fortunately, were copied from a nitrate work print uh, before that decomposed. And that's, that's one of the things we're really trying to do with these restorations. Because you know a lot of these materials are out on DVD, but mostly they were put out without doing complete restorations to get the material back the way it originally looked with the original head titles, etc., etc. So that's what we're trying to do. That's our long-term project. And we are asking you for support. So you can go to our webpage, just uh, Google UCLA Film and Television Archive. There is a specific Laurel and Hardy site, there's a bunch of stuff on that site to look at, and you can also make a donation. And so we thank you for your support, and so now enjoy Rats and Hog Wild. If I don't find that hat man leaving this house, never to darken its doors again. <laughs>
Well, I'll let the one let me play with my blood. <laughs> Will you leave Stanley alone and play quietly? Certainly, if you must make a noise, make it quietly. <laughs> make a noise quietly. Oh, those were absolutely great. Those two Laurel and Hardy pictures, I've never seen either one of them. That was so great. All right, we're gonna take a little bit of a lunch break and uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be back for at least one or two pictures today. Well, I just popped home and uh, had a package from Amazon and uh, thank you, Jennifer Nevins. She said, uh, you got three so I didn't have to pay for shipping, so old Joster got three packs of treats, and uh, she sent me this 1,000 Places to See Before You Die. This is really great, it's a traveling guide, and you can pretty much just alphabetically look up any city and it'll tell you something amazing uh, to see while you're there or uh, to experience. And you know we'll get a lot of use out of that. Okay, we're about to head back. It's after lunch, uh, their lunch break, and we're gonna see an Edison short, the musical Blacksmiths, then a Jack Oakey picture, which the description alone sounds really good. It sounds like um, with the invention of talkies, these guys decided to become like voice coaches or vocal coaches or whatever, and they're just total shysters. Well, so far this festival's been a blast, and I don't, uh, I don't expect it to change from that anytime soon. And uh, this time I have a bag full of DVDs, courtesy of Hollywood Heritage Museum. Awesome. Um, and this is uh, a Baby Peggy short called The Kid Reporter. Um, and it's uh, a new restoration, and our own Frederick Hodges played on it. Uh, and I have ten copies. There we go, we got one. I can't wait to watch this. This next one we're going to see today, these are the blacksmiths is George Willeman's favorite from the Library of Congress. George is one of the folks responsible for restoring these films. And by the way, uh, you can get all of the uh, kinetophones that are currently restored available on DVD through uh, Ben Liddell's Undercrank Productions. Uh, go to uh, Amazon.com or go to Ben's website uh, to get them. They, they're really wonderful. You're just getting a taste of them here. Here, though, you get to see them in the benefit of uh, HD, uh, but the DVDs look great, too, so please do that. Then once in a lifetime, it's going to follow, but I also want to uh, bring up the fact that, uh, as Stan did earlier, today is a day where we've got multiple programs going on. Right now, we've got the Kinetoscope program going on in the Spielberg. In a little while, will be the Regina Doyle program followed by Jerry Beck's animation program. And the Jerry Beck cartoons are all 35 millimeter. They're all Max Fleischer all the time, so uh, it's be a lot of fun.
greatest show in the world. Oh, there's been good pictures before, Jerry. I'm not talking about the pictures. I mean the Vitaphone. What? The Vitaphone, the talkies. They talk, me. Oh, oh, that. That? You ought to hear them cheering, me. Well, it's something so big, I bet even the Vitaphone people don't know what they've got you. Hey, come out of it, Jerry. What do you get this ahead up about? Say, it's no money in your pocket if it is good. We're leaving for Los Angeles tomorrow night. Are you out of your mind? Don't you understand, mate? For the next six months, they won't know which way to turn. All the old standbys are going to find themselves out in the cold. And somebody with brains and sense enough to use them is going to get into the big dough. Well, we're going to call it a day here at the festival. What a great day. Hey, did you miss me? Yeah? I came in and that tail was going... You sounded like a drummer. It was beating on the bed so hard. You want to go to Kevin's house? <laughs> well, I wanted to send a big shout out thank you to Brian Cox, Dolores Dooley Ingle, and Becky Lynn Carter for becoming Patreons. Thank you all so much. Well, we're going to call it a night. I, uh, I did end up going and hang out with my friend Kevin. He took me out to a vegan Cajun restaurant and it was phenomenal. Every single thing that we had was amazing and uh, I didn't put it on camera because I think I want to go back and vlog that on its own. Um, I noticed while we were there they have all kinds of theme nights where um, since the Cajun restaurant they do like a voodoo doll night, they do a live Cajun band, they do all these different themes so I think I want to go back and check it out on its own. So have a great night, thank you all for watching and don't forget to come back tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>